Good evening everybody. It's a beautiful summer evening in Nottingham and I've just completed my restoration of the Yamaha RD 250 LC. This is a 1980 W Reg in the UK so it's a 1980 uh, model and myself and my business partner Paul bought it approximately 14 years ago off eBay and we never did anything to it it just sat in the container so we dragged it out and we found that the frame was rusty, all the alloy had gone, the tyres were perished, all the paint was gone on it. So we uh, decided to completely restore it. So completely stripped it down, absolutely nut and bolt, so every single part was off it. Had it resprayed, had the frame stove enamelled, completely rebuilt the engine as well. Had it rebored, new pistons, new crank, new seals everything the whole lot has been done the wheels have been stripped and built and as you can see it looks stunning doesn't it absolutely stunning so uh, just gonna have a bit of a bit of a play and this time I've got a chest cam hello so you can actually come for the ride with me So let's get that sorted out, knock it up a little bit. You have to fold the foot peg up when you start it. Ignition on. First kick. We'll listen to that baby. Fold the foot peg back down again so I don't forget. Let's turn it round. I've also just about run it in so I can open it up a little bit. So this is the 250cc. Up until 1981-82 learners were allowed to ride these with L plates but the 250LC was one of the first 250s that would actually reach 100 miles an hour and they were a bit of a hooligan bike at the time so the government in their wisdom reduced the size of learner bikes to 125cc and then these became very cheap even 14 years ago we only paid about £750 for this and they weren't really worth anything and then all of a sudden with this resurgence of classic bikes and two strokes the price of this went up so something of this sort of age and condition now you wouldn't get too much change from around five to six thousand pounds so we're in a 30 limit at the moment so I've got to be a good boy but when uh, we get into the de-restricted I'll open it up a little bit it does shift a bit but it's uh, it's got a couple of flat spots that I think a lot of RDs tend to have so here we come to the National, got to knock it down a couple of gears, <laughs> and there we go. So it does shift a little bit and it's very crisp and clean. I've never completely stripped an engine down before. See it's got a flat spot there, 5,000 it's not doing anything. Just coming on at 6, 6.5 and, and there it goes. So I'm going to knock it down a gear for the corner. Just got to keep it singing around the 6,000 mark. And again, just hold it around the corner. Keep it going and up to 8,000. And again, full throttle. <laughs> up to 8,000. And again. It's running really crisp and clean. And six gear. So all that use, and I got it up to about 65, 67 on the clock. The clock on this is reading a little bit positive, so I was only doing about 55 to 60. But to get anything out of these, you have to keep it singing. Oh, the mirror's coming. <laughs> they also did a 350cc version of one of these as well. But of course you had to have a full licence for that, where learners were allowed to ride these. 
back down to the 30 a little bit. There we go. Let's turn left here. It's pretty flat, just holds back about five, and then at 6,000 it really does take off. There's only been a short uplay just to show you enthusiasts of these, these old classic bikes, just what fantastic little pieces of kit these were. They had a race series on them as well, called a Pro-Am, and that's what that belly pan was. You notice I've held it on with tie wraps at the moment because I've not got round to putting the mountings on properly. I've only done probably about 60, 70 miles since I've restored it. But to run two strokes in, you're looking at putting it through what you call heat cycles. That's having it run for several minutes, letting it cool down, run it again, let it cool down, and then tighten up the uh, cylinder heads. Wait for it to come on. There we go. Maybe my temperature sender's not working. That vibrating is that. So, might even be selling this now, I'm not too sure. I'll see you later.